Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Happy Thursday to you all. Hope you're all doing well. Hope your week is going well. We're almost at the weekend. And uh, yeah, and today I got a really, really good guest. Here's a gentleman that I wanted to have on here a long time ago, but he got scooped up by another show that I will not name, but the initials are TWL or TLW, sorry. But I finally managed to scoop him, and uh, he's been a big supporter of the channel for a long time. So it's an absolute ple pleasure to have him on. And here he is, folks. Our buddy Don, Court Jams. How are you, man? We interrupt this live stream to bring brought to you by Guitar Hack T shirts. There you go. All right. We got 23 in here already. Let me just uh, quickly say hello to the folks that have joined us. We got Jay Steen in here. My buddy Bruce guarding the gate. Welcome, man. Appreciate it. Who else we got? Mitch Heyman. Hey, Mitch. How are you? Just going down. Mark Wade. Hey, man. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. Uh, Quentin. Quentin. Uh, well, you know what? I haven't done the Quentin shout in a while. You want to try this one on the count of three? Go. One, two, three. Quentin. Quentin. There you go. Quentin James in the house. Good timing. Good timing. Lars Guitars is here. Zim's Guitars. Daniel Horsley is here. Hey, man. Nice to see you. Six String Brian, welcome. Just going down as quick as I can, folks. Brian Landreth. Hey, man. How are you? Hank Hill. Nice to see you. Oh, there's the first jump of the evening. Jeff Miller. Pete Brown. Welcome. Uh, Blackjack Guitar Nut. How are you? Gary Holt. Hey, man. Nice to see you guys. Uh, Danny New Jersey is here. Rick Hefner, Janice, nice to see you. Fruitcake Tony is here. Have I got everybody? I think I have. If I missed you, folks, uh, just just tag me and uh, and I'll. Janice is in the house. Yep, yeah. So Jan oh, there's Spencer Cron, Teal. Spencer Cron. Oh, Teal. Teal. Canada, welcome, welcome to the channel. Cool, cool. Rick Hefner, EJ's guitars. Hey, man. Hey, how you doing cool so um yeah if you've got if you have um, <laughs> ej you ham <laughs> the president called said i was one. <laughs> oh, i got you i got you dwight bailey is here nice to see you so folks as we go along here just hey, hey, man thank us if you've got questions and and so on or comments and uh looking a bit gray there I'm looking a little gray. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? It's called, uh, I haven't been, uh, gotten my hair cut <laughs> in like three months, right? And I'm out of the so I got a problem. All right. So, Dan, let's start, uh, Don, let's start at the beginning. So, who or what got you interested in the guitar or music in general? If that well, well, a guy that I grew up with, uh, from like third grade on. We, we our paths were destined our parents split up at the same time we moved to the same apartments he was first chair first trumpet i was second chair first trumpet but he could play guitar and you know he'd show me a couple you know i went from a my brother's old acoustic you know probably 20 dollar guitar to right. a nylon string to a decent acoustic to an electric and he was always showing me stuff but he would never really show me stuff you know, he would, but because I wouldn't learn how to read. And when we were like juniors in high school, we went to see a band at the high school, you know, like in the auditorium. It was, uh, I think, for charity. You, know, you had to pay to get in. Yeah. And the he was in a warm up band and we had kind of like drifted apart a little bit because I was a big jock. He was in the band. I couldn't play trumpet anymore because I had busted my lip wide open. So we're sitting there and I mean, we're, we're probably very wasted. And the warm-up band comes on, and there's Chris. And they did, like, Ohio by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And mm -hmm. he played the leads to the T. And and me and my buddy, look, if he can do it, we could do that. So we started getting into electrics. And him and another guy, after we got out of high school, showed me some, like, the Berkeley technique, you know, alternate picking, all four fingers, thumb behind the uh, neck. Right. And that's why I play the way I play you know, but I never really learned. I didn't, you know, I got through the first book and, you know, I was when I was like 18 and that was the end of reading and the rest of it was just by ear, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. So you, it, it sounds pretty similar to the, the way I kind of learned is sort of by ear and pick yeah. up scraps here and there and whatever. And if somebody would show me something, but it, I got it, it got as I got older, there wasn't really anybody to show me anything anymore. Yeah, yeah. So what was uh, like, what was the first decent instrument that you got? Uh, where you felt good about playing this. So like, yeah, okay. So, so Chris played trumpet primarily. He was like all state trumpet, you know, like that's like if you're an athlete, you know, the best in your, you know, state, you know, the impressive credentials, you know, he was like Maynard Ferguson in his senior year in high school. If you know Maynard Ferguson, he's like a guy that plays trumpet that can squeal oh, way, way high up. It, you'd have to, it's a jazz trumpet thing. But right. anyway, his buddy, a guy that I really never crossed paths with because I was a big jock and he was like, this guy was doing drugs in like eighth grade, you know? <laughs> well, he, he like, you know, the, the light bulb went off and he enlisted in the Navy. And the guy was so smart, he went into the nuke program. This is like in 1976. And in, in the 70s, in the Navy, the nuke program was like, that was the that was it. And very few people could get into that. Okay, mm -hmm. He had to be real smart. He thought he was going to be a doctor, but he ended up going in the nuke program. I bought his uh, SG, Gibson oh. SG. It was a nice guitar. That is a nice guitar, man. Yeah. Of course, my brother's cats like to play with the strings that, you know, I didn't know to cut off the ends of your strings when you change the strings. Okay. <laughs> Twice they swatted that guy, that guitar and broke the, the heel. And a buddy of mine, another buddy of mine fixed the, the neck joint. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, sweet. But uh, in a fit of rage one night, I, I smashed an acoustic guitar on the floor and my SG happened to be laying there. <laughs> oh shit! So two, I got two smash guitars for the price of one. And that SG, what year was that? Like that'd be worth. Well, something. that was. Oh, if I had that guitar now, that was. So he, I bought it from him in '76, a year after we graduated. Right. So that was probably a '73 or '74. Ebony fret, ebony, ugh, ebony fingerboard. Wow. And the action. Oh my God, the action was. You couldn't have lower action and no buzzing. It, it was, you know, and I did, I had a, uh, I bought a, a real nice amp from another buddy's brother who needed them. who couldn't afford the payments anymore. It was SG Systems. Really cool amp. It had, uh, I guess it had four 10-inch speakers, had a phase shifter built into it. And in the 70s, phase shifters was a big deal. You know, the Isley Brothers? Yeah. It's the same amp that actually Ernie Isley used for a while. Hmm. Uh, it was a company out of California and my dad was an electronical engineer. So he could, he put new tubes in it for me when, you know, stopped working. So anyway, that's how I got in. kept playing over the years. And I'd say about, let's see, I'm 62. I'm going to say in my mid forties, something happened. And by mistake, I figured out pentatonics scales, not by watching a video or, or a book or anything. It just came to me and my playing evolved quite a bit better than what I ever played before. That's a long time before you get to a pentatonic scale though. Well, I didn't, I probably played kind of like pentatonics, but I don't know. All of a sudden I could just play to anything. Right. You know, except for metal. I can't, I'm not real good with metal. Uh, I that, can't metal. that chunk of chunk of that triplet thing we were talking about in one of yeah, the, the gallop. Yeah, the gal. There you go. Uh, yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, that challenge that we passed around there a while back, that Iron Maiden thing, that, that just about killed me. <laughs> and just to let you know, in, in like 1983, a buddy of mine, the, the guy, Chris, the trumpet player, he was playing in a duo with my other buddy's brother, and he wanted to get a different guitar because his SG kept going out of tune. I bought his, his, SG. Now that had a uh, rosewood fingerboard for like two hundred dollars. Oh man! Yeah, and I turned around and sold that about a year later to, to the music store for two hundred dollars, so I could buy my girlfriend uh, some earrings. <laughs> she was in the hospital, and I didn't have any money. I, I was selling. I was having a bad streak of selling cars. But right. you need money yourself. What you got, you know? So I've had two nice SGs when I was younger. But back then, I, I could play sitting down. It didn't bother my back. I can't play sitting down. Yeah, I know that. All your, all your videos, you're standing when you're playing. I can play sitting down, but if I hunch. And man, I, oh, father time taking its toll on my back. 
Well, here's the first question for you uh, from Mitch. He's saying, ask Don all the good times he had at Bill's Music House. You know, I, I almost wish you hadn't have brought that up, Mitch, because I got to tell you something. That is the hardest place to go in and buy a guitar in the world. Why is that? It's like they don't want to sell you something. I don't know how to explain it. It would be like, it'd be like, see, I, 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 I have a sales pack. I sold cars for half my life, 30 some years. And, you know, somebody comes in, I didn't pressure them to buy, but I, you know, you want to buy a car, let's buy a car or a truck or whatever. You're going to get, first of all, you might get, hey, how you doing? Can I help you? I just want to look right now. Right. And when it's time, I want to play this guitar. It's like pulling teeth to get somebody to help you. Oh yeah, and I, I, I even I, went up there one time when I my wife said stop selling cars and I took some time off, took about a year off doing anything, and I even went up there and I I had tried I, to apply for a job online, but <coughs> my computer skills <coughs> or my computer would not allow me to uh um. Uh, Oh, never mind. Uh, would not allow me to send the uh, app over online. So I walked in and I said, hey, you know, I've sold cars for all my life. I'd, you know, love to, you know, try to sell. I don't know a lot about guitars, but I can sell anything. And be honest with you, I, I was talking to the manager. I said, can you hire or, or do I have to talk? He said, no, you got to talk to the owner, but he, he wants to see your stuff online. You know, they have a question. Do you know anything about this, that? You got to right, right. And I didn't know anything about it, but I never sent it in. And I said, you know what? They don't even want, they won't sell me a guitar. They won't give me a chance to work here. So I, I go, I'll go, I'll go to guitar center before I'll go there. But I do like, I went up there the other day to try to get the cables. They didn't have any short cables. How do you have a guitar store that doesn't have any six foot cables? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You were saying that. And I was saying, just order it off Amazon. That's what I did. <laughs> just ordered a couple. But Mitch, back in the day, it was a much better, better uh, place to do business with. Back, yeah. You know, back in the 80s and 90s. So one thing I didn't hear, Don, when you were going through all that is there was no mention of any bands. Did you actually? No. Play the only time I got up a couple times and uh, played leads to like uh, Feeling All Right by Dave Mason with that duo I was telling you about. My buddy and my buddy's brother did a duo. And I was telling you this last night. And you know, they play bars. And they were very good. Like, you know, they could do like uh, beginnings, just two guitars, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, beginnings by Chicago. But then my buddy, Chris, would play trumpet, you know, like some of the trumpet parts of beginnings. So it, it they sounded like there were more than two people up there. And he did the, uh, you know, tambourine a little bit. So they were very good. So occasionally I'd get up there, you know, once I was wasted enough and, uh, you know, play some leads to something. but. Yeah, my, my big uh my big performance was in the Bahamas. This is a good story. I was in the Bahamas with yeah. my wife and uh, another couple. Yeah, no, I forget how many people there. Anyway, where we were staying, it was in um free free Freeport Freeport. So the, the the complex we were staying at wasn't on the beach. You had to take a bus to this place called Xanadu Beach, right. and they had a big gazebo and a bar, and about two hundred yards from that was the ocean. You know, so you go down the ocean and, you know, you're buying beer from a guy out walking around in the water with a tub of ice and beer. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, you drink in the sun, you get wasted a little bit quicker. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and it's hotter. than that. I mean, it's like Hades down, you know, in the beach right. in, in right. the Bahamas. So I went up to the gazebo. They had like a, uh, a, a guy on drums and a guy on keyboards. And um, there was a guitar and an amp there. And, I, you know, I'm. At this point, I'm, I've got no fear. I said, where's the guitar player, man? You guys are good. You know, they're playing all kinds of covers and, you know, with the with the uh, Bahama accent. It, it, it was great. Yeah. And next thing I know, my wife's behind me and and um, he goes, oh, the guitar player ran the um, like if you wanted to rent jet skis or go out on the banana boat. You know, okay. He was busy. He was working. Yeah. Yeah. He was working, you know. So and my wife, go, he, she goes, he plays guitar. And they go, oh, you want to play guitar? So I'm playing this old Strat. Where's Brian? Is Brian in here? <laughs> playing this old Strat through like some kind of twin amp. No effects. 
but you know, I don't care. Right. And big long court. There's no monitors or anything. I couldn't hear a thing. I was playing hardly. We did Black Magic Woman, and because <laughs> I you know, A minor, I'm good. You know, A minor to D minor. I, you know, I could play that. And, two and three chords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and and they were they were like digging it because I was I was playing fast and I was fear you know I was drunk as a skunk but I I could I would I had enough wits about me to be able to play and you know, cute, I was black yeah. magic woman like uh -huh. you know I knew that all all of that and then they went into uh, whatever I don't know if that's the name of the song but Cisco Kid is a friend of mine you know that song yeah uh, it's from the seventies but it's Cisco kid is a friend of mine. I can't sing. But anyway, they went into that and I just started playing the melody of it and we jammed. So we jammed for about a half hour. It was fun. So that was my big performance in life <laughs> in the Bahamas, drunk as a skunk. <laughs> I'm sure you were, you're sure you were feeling good and everybody else there was feeling pretty good all around. Right. And you got to know what that's like if the amps behind you about 10, 15 yards. I can't hear yeah, it. We cranked it up all the way. I couldn't hear it. Yeah, here a little bit, but well, yeah. and you you're, you're outdoors, so there's no reflection, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly outdoors. Well, yeah, you you can't, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's pretty hard to play if you can't hear yourself and under any circumstance, like period. But some of the drunks out in the uh, out in the uh, audience when we were waiting for the bus to take us back to the resort said I sounded good. So yeah, there, there you go. go. There you I go. I just didn't have any delay, man. If I had delay in overdrive, I'd have crushed. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we were talking last night, uh, preparing for this, and Don's secret sauce is the delay. Whatever you play, just just like lots of delay on the end, baby. Delay that overdrive, drown it in delay, and everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> but it's very important that you delay the overdrive. Don't overdrive the delay. It doesn't work that way. It's gotta right. have you gotta have a dirty sound. Delay it, and it it really does cover up. It, it even you can't even hardly tell if you're out of tune. You know, here, here's the funny thing. Here's the difference between like the half, ha the glass half empty, and the glass half full. With me, when I think about too much delay, what I hear is okay. If I hit a bum note, I'm not just going to hear it once. I'm going to hear it about four times. <laughs> See, it, you know, I'll tell you what. Tim Pierce just did a uh, a video. I think I don't think it was. I think it's a recent video on delay. And if you watch that, he'll show you how you have all those repeats. But there's ways to where you it just it just blends everything together and doesn't go on all that. Uh, you got to watch the it's it's a good uh good if you want to understand delay. Tim Pierce. Yeah, yeah. I watched it last night. It's good, good video. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got your time, and then you got how many repeats you want. So yeah, yeah, you, yeah. So you can control that. So. Man, so you've been playing like you mentioned you were in your forties. So like all the way through, you've always been maybe well, not playing intensely. I, but I started buying. A, I started getting gas uh, right around let's see, 80, right around eighty eight ninety when I got married, and uh, my buddy, my best friend, had finished his degree and and was working. He was buying a lot of equipment. And, and, you know, he'd learned computers and sequencing and all. So we would jam, we'd just do two, you know, all along the watchtower down by right. the river, those kind of jams. Mm -hmm. And he was buying stuff and I was trying to keep up with him. And he got he got a Roland GP16, I think it was called, effects processor. Right. Along with that Boss Overdrive box that we gave away on the live wires. Oh, okay. you know, no, no, Joey, Joey, Joey got that. Joey. uh Joe Hervey, 84, got that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is a nice overdrive box, by the way. And so that's where we got the uh, overdriven sound, followed by delay, and usually into a PA. We usually had a PA to play. And that's what I, I to this day, that's what I play through a PA. I don't have a good amp. I want to get a good amp one day. You want to get a good amp one day? Yeah, one day. Just, you know. Well, Andy Dion's got a question. Don, when when were you first diagnosed with gas? <laughs> Probably right around when I got married, 1988, 89-ish, right after I got married. And my yeah. wife has been a very good sport all these years. Oh, my God. That's great, man. That's, that's great when you got, like, either she supports her, she's a good sport about it, like, she turns it. She I can turn up as loud as I want in here. She just 
tunes. I feel bad for Mitch because he's got to play headphones all the time. She just tunes it out, man. She has, you know, the only time she ever commented is I was working on a uh, 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 house of the rising sun. So I programmed the chords into my trio plus and I came down and she goes, I didn't know you knew how to play house of the rising sun. It's like, it was a hallelujah moment. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, um, uh, that was, now that was be right? Yeah. Okay. So now we can officially begin because my coffee has arrived. Right. Well, I, I'm doing iced tea tonight. But is it coffee? It is coffee. Yeah. Oh, cool. I have. To, I got to have at least two of these a day. I got to have one in the morning. And one in the one in the evening, at least two. If I drink coffee this late, I'd never get any sleep. Doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> Good for you. It's weird. And then there was a period when it did bother me, and then it kind of went away. And I'm fine with it again. Oh, okay. Brian S is in the house, right? Yes, he is. We got to interrupt the stream. All right, we got to interrupt this right. This portion of the stream is brought to you by Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> Just for you, buddy. There you go. <laughs> With that strategically uh, placed uh, volume knob. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Like I was, I was saying to you yesterday or, or earlier today, I was saying I, I just did another, um, I just did another video of me playing along with stuff, and I was playing the strat, and I was hitting the volume with my hands. I was, and because I, and I don't notice that I'm doing it until I, all of a sudden, my, <laughs> my guitar just starts getting quieter and quieter. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm down to six. And then I crank it back up to 10. So, but it, it, it all depends on how your, your picking hand is. Like I, I tend to fan my fingers out. So that's what the, it's the, that's the pinky that's going to hit it. Right. So, right. but if, if you play with the closed hand and I can't see it being an issue, but yeah, well, on rhythm, I have a closed hand. And when I play leads, I anchor my pinky to the body. So my yeah. hand's away from it. Yeah. I usually, yeah, I usually anchor too. So. <laughs> cool cool so for like right now i know i know you're using the helix and are you basically playing your helix just through like a set of pa speakers is that pretty much what you're doing In, into a bear old behringer uh pa system like one oh. you could use for a band you know it's right, got right. and then that's eight going... channels eight I... channels or six channel i'm not sure which and then like now since i got the q8 the zoom q8 i take the the alps of the mixer um into the actually into the camera right it has quarter inch is that what it's called quarter inch inputs yeah right. into the camera so my sounds are a little better recently and uh but the problem i'm having like i told you last night is it sounds perfect in the room with those big ass stupid monitors that i have whatever they are the 16 inch or yeah, which is too big. I don't need, I didn't need, I only needed 10, but I was told to get 16 by somebody that supposedly knew what they were talking about. Anyway, it sounds great in the room, but if it sounds great in the room, the, the leads are overwhelming when I upload it to YouTube. Uh -huh. so, so to get a good mix, because I don't do the doll thing. I'm, I'm working on the doll thing. Give me another year. <laughs> right. And uh, so when I'm, to get a good mix, really when i'm jamming in the room i can't hear my leads as well and if i think when you turn up you get a different sound you get a different feel and you play different notes that's that's how you know yeah like i was trying to tell you if if you're jamming just not playing a cover not playing note for note type thing just jamming to two, a, a backing track or whatever i'm telling you guys if you add a lot of delay to an overdriven sound you'll find different things to play. I promise you, you'll, you'll, it, it just, it's to play dry. Like you do. I can't do that. It, 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 it exposes uh, how sloppy I am. It really does. It's a great crutch. I call it my crutch. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear, I uh, say the thing is I don't like an overly wet tone. I just, I just don't, I want to hear a guitar in there somewhere. Well, I'll get crude. I like it wet and sloppy. Dude. <laughs> but uh yeah well yeah. the guitar <laughs> yeah yeah of course that's what i meant of course, of course. <laughs> um so I'm, I'm thinking like amps for you 
if you're looking at getting an amp, if you got because you've got you've got the Helix, right? So and the Helix has all these. I don't know if you make use of the you know the IRs and the amp mods and, or the. I amp. do the amps and the cabs. Uh, I got a couple IRs from somebody, and I got to learn how to control. They they tend to really give you output the way I do it. You know the way I program the rest of the things. I'm not. Yeah, you know, I got a lot of tweaking learning to do. I, let me tell you something. If you get a Helix of any sort, it's like you're like a kid in a candy store with the fact you have every pedal that you could possibly go out and buy. Yeah. Unless you're into this, you know, the anal, you know, it's got to be through a tube amp and it's got to, you know, uh, I just don't get, uh, unless you're like playing in a situation like you do hack with a band. Mm. Uh, I, I, it's, it's endless. You, you'll never have enough time to master something like Helix or Kemper or even I think that Moore has one and the head rush, any of those multi yeah, these I, I, modern day multi effects things. I mean, listen yeah. to EJ's videos. He's used head rush. He's used programs on the computer. Hmm. There's just, you get, you get 5,000 stop boxes in one little package, even yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, with mine, I'm still playing through a tube app. Right, yeah. All, all that's doing is that's replacing the pedals, but I'm still right. through a tube amp, so you still get that 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 feel of it. You know what I mean? So, um, and you know what I what I really here's my number one. This is my groupie. Hey, there you go. This is Gypsy. She's a rescue mutt from West Virginia. I think she's got Jack Russell in her, but she's like uh, 25 pounds. She's a little fat. <laughs> I thought I'd bring her into this. No, I can't take you out, puppy. Go skip, mommy. Go. But um, you know what? What I really like with having all the effects is like, um, and and, it, and I went nuts when I first got it. It's getting a, a a tone on a record that's got a lot going on, and in the 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 fun of trying to duplicate all those sounds and program them all in, right? You know, and then try to get be you know, trying to match it up. <laughs> You know, trying to match, yeah. your and that that I really enjoy doing that, and I've I've done that, um, you know, for a couple of, like, uh, we were able to finally rehearse this past Tuesday, and it was the first time that I did one of the songs that I just mentioned that I kind of picked up for uh, the the song called uh, "She Sells Sanctuary" by the Cult, which has got a shit ton of phase and flat, all kinds of stuff going on. And I and I listened to the record, and I literally dialed up. It's almost like you know, you, you you're just using your ear, and I hear a little that little. And I I thought I got it pretty near bang on. And then to play that with all that shit going on with the band and play that intro, I thought it sounded great. You know. Oh, and, well, well, the the important thing is, what did the drummer think? <laughs> well, the funny thing is, afterwards, oh, they got too much delay on that. I'm like, listen to the record. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. Oh. That guy's tough, isn't he? That drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing your your stories about the band. You know, well, how can you take a guy seriously that just hits things with sticks? I mean, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I can't watch. I, you, Hack, I tell you, I don't know how you do these things and walk, talk and watch the chat, man. You, you guys are good. That can do you and Brian, Dave. Well, I'm just looking at if there's questions coming up, and I haven't seen any questions come up. Uh, uh, Bruce is throwing up links to your channel, which is very cool. Thank you, Bruce. And uh, Brian is also throwing up links, which is very cool. And HK is with us. Hey, HK, how are you? Oh, Johnny Bean, Bobby Lopes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, Bobby Lopes. Yeah, he's a drummer. Sorry, man. Didn't mean to. <laughs> You had to be one drummer in the, in the chat, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, yeah, there's somebody always got to be in the line of fire, right? <laughs> exactly. Did you tell Brian yet about your buds? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll offline. I'll, he'll walk me through something. I'm just not having good luck with these friggin' earbuds. Yeah. You're talking about it. I was thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Uh, the rolling, um, JC. Well, I, I, what I want to do, and I'll probably go to this place bills just because it's 
I mean, I could walk there in 15 minutes. I can drive there in three. Right. Just take my Helix with my patches and go up and play the Roland JC. What's the 120? And yeah. The JC. What's the smaller one? The one, the 40. Why, why a Roland? Why are you looking at Roland? Because it's a clean. It's clean. It's, it's a good clean amp. And I don't need anything with a lot of, uh, like a Marshall or something that, or, and I'm not big on Fender amps, man. You you turn them up to two and they're too loud. So, well, the thing is, what you what you you're not going to use the amp for the overdrive. Yeah. Option, so you want to what you want is a really good pedal platform, right? Yeah, that's basically Isn't that a clean like something clean. But you're uh, I'm I'm going to let you in on one of my secrets. So, okay, if you run. When you run pedals or or a helix or HX anything, when you run it into an amp, you you want the amp like the way I set up my amp, and I learned this from Dan and Mick on the pedal show, by the way. You run your amp so that you have it on the verge of breakup. So, like in other words, when you get no effects on, if you hit the guitar really hard, it just starts to break up a little bit. Right. And then you throw your pedals in front of it, and basically, when you do it that way, and you have it on the edge of breakup. So you're going to get, say, your drives and your gain sounds off of your pedals. But that that pushing that amp, you're also going to get a layer on top of the gain from your amp. And that gives it that sort of that tube uh, kind of taste to it, right? Uh, so that won't come like after? Like, you're not getting out that of the won't be like putting overdrive at the end of the chain? No. Well, it's like so... If, if you're hitting the amp with a gain, you're hitting the amp hard, but the amp is already on the verge of breaking up anyways. Oh, okay. So, you're, so what, what it is is you get a flavor of the tube. It's not just all coming from your pedal now. Now you're involving the amp in your sound. Oh. So if you get like something, um, I know what you mean about, I know what you mean about the, um, the Hot Ride Deluxe uh, is brutal like that, how you just put a little bit and it cranks. I, you know what? I, I'd look at I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit partial, but I would look at if you really don't want any gain off the amp and you want something to just break up nice, I'd look at a DSL 40. I'd look at the origin prop. Well, it would have to be the origin 50 just cause it's got a 12 inch speaker. That's what I'd be looking at that way. I'm getting a little bit of the benefit of the amp and the sound. And you might be surprised. You might, you might really like the way it, it sounds. Uh, are they like combos? Because I really don't know if I want to get the 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 amp oh, and then the, the well, they're combos. You want a combo by the sound of it. You want a combo. I don't combo. Think you, yeah. yeah, I don't think you want to. Whatever you buy, make sure that it's got a twelve inch speaker because anything less and this is just my opinion, but anything smaller than a twelve inch speaker on a combo amp is just not good. Okay, cool. So Patrick, sure. that hippie's got a question for you. He says, "Ask Don how he got so good looking." So. <laughs> Where's my wife? <laughs> She's upstairs. <laughs> ah, you know, uh, lots of Jameson, baby. Jameson yeah. and vodka, not together. Different, you know. We we trade off. Well, Mitch Heyman is uh, is saying, what about getting a Boss Katana 100? Well, the, the, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you're buying a whole ton of pedal, uh, uh more effects that I don't think you want to bother with. If I didn't have the Helix, I'd be all over the Katana. Because I've heard Nick, I mean Mitch, some of your old videos. I think you were using a katana, and somebody else yeah. used a katana. Yeah, has great sounds through it. You don't hear about the katana as much, but so you know it pops up and. No, uh, all, all, all the uh, all the um, what do you call it? demos or whatever, are good on that. You know the people that do reviews of it, they get a lot of good sounds out of it. Yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with the katana. It's just, it's got, a, it has a lot of built-in stuff, a lot of built-in sounds, and I don't think you're looking for more sound. Yeah, I got the helix, man. I, yeah, I don't need another effect the rest of my life. You know, if I live another ten years, hopefully I do. I still won't have gone through everything at the helix because they keep updating and adding stuff to it. Yeah, you know, which yeah, which is cool. I like that. You know, that makes up for the lousy instruction manuals they give you. And make me watch all the videos that I've watched. Oh my god! Yeah, there's a there's a lot. There, you know what I mean? And I don't. I have a fraction of what you have, and I still don't know how to use half this stuff. I've been online. It, it, it's you got. You know, if you want to do tremolo, you've got eight or nine. You might have over ten tremolos to choose from because you got the legacy, the stereo, the mono, the yeah. And then you can tweak them individually each parameter. And then if you throw, 
one day I'll figure out EQ. And yeah, uh, the EQ thing, man, that's a secret. That's software. real important. That that helped me. That ten band thing you told me. That ten band EQ thing, yeah, a little oh, bit. Quentin James got a question. He's asking, "What kind of guitars does Don have?" So we've seen a couple. We've seen the Blue Les Paul a lot. Uh, I'm up. I'm downstairs. So uh, if you want to see all of them, go to the live wires when I'm on there and just scroll through until you find me. Uh, and find that section of it. Uh, but I've got a. Uh, I've got a. I traded a. Uh, in nineteen, we we're talking about Bill's Music House before, and in nineteen eighty eight. 1987, right before we got married, I went to this Beals Music House and I was going to buy a black less. I was going to rent a guitar to go up to New Jersey to jam with my buddy. Right. I, I, you know, I didn't, I couldn't figure out a strat, never have been able to figure out the strat. And my wife said, just buy it. You know, don't rent it. Let's just buy it. I'm thinking, yeah, let's do that. So I had this, I was a big Al Demiola fan, Return to Forever, black. Black Les Paul. Paul. So this yeah. is 1980. Are we married? It was either 87 or 87. It was Ebony Fredford. Oh, God, I loved it. Well, the salesman talked me into playing. He, he like Ebony Fredboard's here. He gave me this Gibson WRC, which is a super strat, mm. and talked me into buying that. I don't know how, you know, I don't know how I let him do that, but it was a good guitar. Anyway, I traded that. I've got a Gelvin Orion that I didn't buy that I traded the Gibson on. I've got a Epiphone ES Blonde ES335 copy, you know, the Epiphone version of the ES335. Yeah. I've got this Strat. Listen to this Strat. My buddy brought this down in 1984, 83, 84 from Sam Ash in New Jersey for – $199 a Jap strap. Wow, that's a hell of a but, but it's got this stupid it's you know whatever locking. I, I don't even have a lock now. And I never used the tremolo and I blocked it the way Scott Grove showed me. I like it, but it's just something about a strat. I can't I can't play real well clean. And I right. think if you're playing a strat, it sounds a lot better playing clean. And I have, uh, I want a guitar from Caesars All Guitar. It's a uh, Chapman ML2 Les Paul copy, which is a very nice guitar. It's kind of cool having um, a Les Paul style guitar with 24 frets. Yeah. And it's got an ebony fingerboard. And, uh, you know, Caesar set it up before he sent it. He did a video on the setup before he sent it to me. And, uh, it's it's very nice, but uh, I just it, there's something about the neck. it's a weird neck. Mm. It's 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 not the baseball bat like that you don't like, but I uh, I'd say it's like a fat D shaped neck. You know what I'm saying? It, right. From front to back, it's a little bit wider than what I, I like a thinner neck. Except the Les Pauls for some reason Les Paul, and I have that. That's a 2019 standard HP. You got the high performance. So, so the one yeah. you've got, you've got the cut, you got the heel joint is smoothed over, right? Yeah, you got good access compared to yeah, West really good. I played them before. Yeah, yeah. And is there? A, I can't remember. Is there a belly cut on that? No. Ah, shit, I don't know. Mitch, nope. do we have belly cuts? Because our guitars are the same, except I got a chrome all over the place. Yeah. So there's a there's and a, mine says HP on the uh, on yeah. the um. Uh, you got the cover, the truss rod cover. It's a little bit different because I think Mitch has the standard and you've got the HP. They're the, but they're the, I'm telling you, except for cosmetics, there's really not much. There's no, no difference. They got the that goofy electronics. And I opened that up in the back and um, flipped all those little switches. The switches, yeah. Didn't make any difference. Not yeah. that you really hear. They wanted they wanted the, the the controls to be assignable so you can make them different things if you didn't want tone, tone. Yeah, you're not going to. It, it, it. All it does is quiet your guitar if you pull those knobs out to split the coils or get it out of phase or whatever. It really that's all it does. It's like if you have a nice loud tone, you pull those out and now you've cut it down from from eight to four. It cuts it about in half. And that, that's and that's the big thing. I you know, like I've only ever played one guitar that you can split the coil and, and you didn't lose any volume. And believe it or not, it was a PRS and it was a CE. And 
you know, that was the one guitar where A, you could split the coils and it was usable sound and it sounded great. But the way it was wired up, like with the Gibson, you can split them individually. The way the PRS the CE is set up is you split them. You can only have two split or two humbucker. So you can't split them individually, which is fine. It still sounded great. You know, it had three position switch on it. Oh, Dave's in DR Guitars. Hey, Dave. Yeah, Dave's in here. Metalhead Hippie. Yeah, we got What's Up Doc is in here. Got a Doc who joined us. Got Blackjack Guitar Nut. Yeah, yeah. This oh, Southern Bell. I'm a Southern Bell. That's a oh, new name. Oh, welcome to the channel. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we got 44 people watching. Right. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, so folks, if you've got um, any questions for Don or myself, uh, please uh, throw them in the chat. Hey, hey, Hack, should we do the unboxing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so Don got, uh, oh, Half Face is here. Uh, Don got some today. So, uh, it's out of the box. It's not a, it's not guitar gear. It's, it's, uh, production gear, YouTube gear. <laughs> I've never bought a thing in my life from overstock.com. You know, you always see those ads, right? And, and this thing popped up because I was researching lights. So, I got two lights. There's one of them. Here's the other. And what's cool about them is they're adjustable dimming. So, hopefully, I'll have better quality videos. And then I got stands. No, I'm not taking a box out. But anyway, so that's, that's your mini quick out unboxing. It just came in the mail today. I'll tell you what, I ordered it. What's today? Thursday? Ordered it Saturday? Ordered it Saturday. Got it Thursday. That's pretty impressive in this day and age. All right, Hippie, I've already asked him that question. Hippie's obsessed with your looks, Don. Maybe you guys uh, right. need to hook up. Well, my wife might have a problem with that. She's jealous of everything. Well, is she going to have a problem before you do? I don't know. <laughs> Not my type, Hippie. Sorry, dude. <laughs> and I ain't traveling to Alaska. <laughs> hey, R2's in here. Hey, R2, how are you? Oh, man. You know, I take my hat off. It's really scary. Wow. Uh. I need a haircut so bad, man. I'm sweating yeah. like a pig here right now. It's 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 80 some degrees and humid. No air blowing. You know, it's been rain on and off all day. You haven't put your air on yet? Your air conditioner on yet? No, nah, she doesn't want to put it on yet. Oh, really? And okay. trust me, I'll walk around here in a hoodie and she's in short sleeves. So she, you know, she's got the temperature thing. She but she's uh she's toughing it out. So oh, that's cool. That's cool. So um I, I don't know if people in the chat are aware. So what Don and I have been doing, I don't know how long we've been doing this now, Don, like a couple of months. A month and a half, two months, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So what we've been doing is, you know, and, and we've been encouraging folks to do this as well and join us. We've been finding like just backing tracks and just passing them back and forth. Don, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. We're putting the links in our descriptions. At this point, I think we've done at least half a dozen, something like that. Right. right. All and, and, and the, the other point of it is, you know, with us passing these things back and forth, is we're trying to force each other to play outside of our comfort zone, right? You know, and um, and it's it's it's. <laughs> It's been fun and tough at the same time. So, and you said you you had another one in mind that you were gonna give a give a give a yeah. Shot. It's a blue. It's it's um. I don't know if any of you guys know uh, the song "Loan Me a Dime" by Bob Skaggs. Um, I don't know. Did Dwayne Allman play on that back? It's seventies. It's a nice blue. It's an A minor blues, but it's got a nice. Uh, it's not your typical A minor to D minor to E minor thing. Right. So it's it's very it's cool. I'll, I'll do that, but I want to see uh I want to see how this Pink Floyd thing goes because I think we got the most participation on on the Pink Floyd. It's either Pink Floyd or something because well the the one the or maybe it was well, maybe it was 
No, it was one PGH. I don't know. Andy Dion yeah. did one, and it was huh? the, justice, the the justice. No, justice. Just, yeah, served. justice will P be served. PGH live jams. That was a good backing track. That was yeah, that was good. Well, I saw that. I saw Rick uh, Romanelli had that. That's the one, everybody. Yeah, justice right? will be served. That's the one we've gotten. I think five or six people did it. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool because Rick Romanelli did it, and then he he mentioned the guy, and then it's like, because a guy has got a very small channel. Yeah, and I then, saw him. So yeah, and then I I jumped on it, and then you jumped on it, and then a few other people jumped on it, and that's cool. And, and he did his own version of it. Andy Dion did it with the uh, what's the Peter Frampton thing? The uh, Squawk Box. Yeah, Squawk Box. Yeah, that was cool. I don't know how he did that because he didn't have anything. I don't know how you do that without the. I guess he has an effects thing or whatever. Yeah, he must have. Oh, Dave Mike was here. And he's uh, saying that Dwayne played slide guitar on it. There you go. And Jimmy Johnson also played guitar on it. Yeah, it, it's a great A minor. Um, I live in A minor. You know, me and A minor are attached to the hip. And uh, it it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice change for a blues progression. It's slow blues, you know, but it's it's good. You, you won't have any problem. With it. I'll do it. When I sent you the uh, thing, I thought it was three minutes. I didn't look close enough. I went back. It's 30 minute track. So I'm going to keep it around three to four minutes. I'm going to have my phone there, put it on time on stopwatch. And when it goes off, I'm, I'm ending the jam because uh, I don't want to do another seven, 10 minutes. That, that uh, time jam. Geez, that was 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. The the. The uh, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like an idiot. I played the whole thing. But I mean, when I'm by myself, I mean, I can play the same two, three chords for half an hour. You know, I just keep looking for that next, next, uh, next run that I didn't didn't well, play before. You know. Actually, you just reminded me of something. So I got another Pink Floyd one coming out tomorrow, and I got to remember to go back and put the link to the track if anyone wants to have that one. That do. Uh, have a go on that one because that one is really long too. I mean, it's like seventeen minutes or something. But oh, I, did I, you do I, all seventeen? I think it's about seventeen minutes, but I, I shortened it down. I oh, okay. Yeah. I, think I only did three or four minutes on it, and then I just that's enough. Hey, Krellbaz in the uh, Encyclopedia Krellmania. Yeah, Krell's Krell in Manica or whatever. How, whatever. Ben Brooks is in here. Welcome, guys. Great Vanzini. Is in here. The once or twice that I actually get the, the the trivia question right, if I get it right, Krell bars always ahead of me every time. Well, he knows everything, and then he types like a friggin' like a bat out of hell. Which, <laughs> well, I think one of the keys is that he can read. Like if if on um Dave Stafford's when he does it, he has the question that comes on the screen, and I think he can read faster than most of us. So he knows he knows the whole question before we're listening to the question. He's reading it across and boom, type, just like that. Yeah, Plus he knows almost all the answers. Yeah, guy. yeah. He, I don't think he's got time to be googling at that at that speed. There's no way in hell. Did we mention Zach phone? Zach's in the house. Oh, hey Zach, how are you? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny, I can scroll back on this chat, but I cannot type in, and I closed my other computer up, so I can't type in, into the, Randy Crooks, that's a new name. Do you know that name? Hey, yeah. Randy, how you doing, man? Yeah, Randy, I've seen Randy around. Randy. Hey, cool. Welcome, uh, welcome aboard, Ian. Welcome aboard. Yeah, so guys, if you got any questions for myself or for Don, please, uh, please throw them in. But man, some of you guys should, some of you guys should jump in on some of these challenges. It's fun. Yeah. And if you don't want to do the whole length of the of the uh, backing track, end it. You know, the <laughs> I mean, the whole thing. Don and I were talking about this the other day, and it's Paul. Lou. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. How are you, man? The the you know we were talking about this the other day. The whole thing is, you know, a there's a couple of things. One is it's to encourage everybody just to pick up the guitar and play. And the fact that you know Don is doing it and I'm doing it, and we're not we're not we're not going back and editing our mistakes. It's their warts and all, you know, bum notes and pitchy bends and all that kind of stuff. It's just there. And, uh, you know, so don't, don't worry about perfection. 
just uh, it's just a reason to pick up and and play. And then and then what I what I get a, a kick out of is you can have four or five people playing the same track, and they're gonna have and it, it's gonna have a completely different vibe on it. You know, that is very cool. I think that's the coolest thing. Like like the justice, whatever we, that will yeah. be served. That was really cool. Like Rick Romanelli's is completely different from yours, and oh. completely different from my. And, and of course, Andy knocked it out of the park with that. The you know the whatever he did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, excuse, real quick. Hey, Paul Lou, in a minute and seventeen seconds. It seven, a minute and seventeen seconds is excellent. That would be great. And Brian, six dream Brian, you don't suck at anything, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> I've been playing guitar three years and blows half of us away. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> God bless you, man. I know you're a bass player, but still, bass and guitar are different. I don't, you know. Rick after saying, I'm so afraid of messing up that I mess it up. I wouldn't swear. Right, just do it. Look, just do it. Man. Just do Let me it. tell you something. I guarantee you, on every, every video I do, there's at least half a dozen clams in there. You'll see me. And, and anymore, I don't even hardly, sometimes you'll see me grimace, but I just go to the next note. You know, what the hell? Um, you know, I'm the clam man. I should change the name of my channel. So Paul Half Lewis, Face is in here. Hey, Half Face. Paul Lewis is saying, can Don do a 58-second video? Oh, me? Oh, no. No, Christ. I haven't even, I might not get to the, first, the right first note in 58 seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because you know, we'll, we'll like Don and I will will talk before we do the track, and Don will say, "Well, what we'll, what can you play over this?" And I'll say, "Well, you know, you can squeeze in a little bit of this and that, you know." And it's like, "I'll piss on it. I'm just going to play minor through the whole thing." <laughs> and, you know, but it sounds, it sounds fine. <laughs> it works. It's like I say, I play the olive oil olive oily in scale. You know, I don't. You know, I, I guess yeah. I'm pretty much pentatonics and. You know, I throw in some extra notes occasionally. Oh, we got a question from uh, Julie Horsley. Welcome, Julie. Hey, Julie. What is Don's favorite genre of music to play? Well, I guess for the most part, blues. But, you know, just about, you know what my genre is? A minor. <laughs> <laughs> Except for severe metal. You know, if if like I, my, my favorite jam is probably all along the watchtower. And the way I play it is A minor, G to F and back. A lot right. of people do D minor. What's next? C to B and back. Some people go up to E minor, e, uh, e, D and C. D and C, you know, but I do A minor, G to F. When I when I was a kid, you know, when I was younger and I would listen on the radio, my when I listened to Hendrix. It sounded to me like he was playing A minor G to F, although I've learned that he doesn't. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one uh, blues, right, blues is probably I'm best suited to blues, although I try to get a little. I play too many. My problem is I play too many notes. I hear, you know, somebody one time made a mention and he was very nice about it that, you know, you, sometimes it's okay to pause and. Mm -hmm. And I said, I told him he was right. And, you know, he never came back to my channel after that. I mean, I didn't say, you know, I didn't, he wasn't being mean and I wasn't responding negatively to it, you know, but it's, I just can't, I guess phrasing is a issue with me. I can't stop and yeah. let, it, let the notes set in and then go to the next thing. I just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I think, um, what I, you know, what, what I've been trying and, and part of doing this too is obviously to, to try and improve your playing and your phrasing and your this and that. And what I try to do is I try to listen. I, I know, and I, I listen to the changes behind me and then try to like use that as a guide and, and phrase and leave space, you know, and uh, so that it's, it, it makes some kind of musical sense, if you know what I mean. Right. You know? I try, I have, I, I have a bad uh, phobia about leaving space, I guess, but I try to find on every jam, I try to find some melody that I can keep coming back to mm -hmm. with all the other stuff in between. Yeah. W with HK's asking, what is Don's favorite inversion of A minor? 
Uh, just, uh, I guess it's an A minor nine or whatever. When you, instead of, instead of playing the bar uh, like this, what do you, that's, I think that's an A minor nine. Yeah, you're missing a finger though, but it almost looks like a nine chord. Well, um, you're muting the uh, B string and barring, barring across the fifth fret. It would be, it would be the same thing as if you, you're, you're just playing the fifth fret all the way across, but you're muting the B string. Right. The A string, the A. I'm sorry, the A string, E A. Yeah, you're muting the A string. I think that's an A minor nine. Uh, for a long time, I got back, you know, going back out of high school, I got it real heavy into Return to Forever and Mahavishnu Orchestra. Wow. And, and the greatest, to me, the greatest album of all time is Visions of the Emerald Beyond by Ma, John McLaughlin Mahavishnu Orchestra. And there's a song in there called Eternity's Breath, parts one and two. And part two is basically just A minor to B minor. It's in five, I think, instead of four. And that's how the sound, if, if you put distortion on it, that, you know, it's not a regular A minor. You know, yeah. so I think that's A minor nine, something or other. I, 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 I know nothing. I, I know the chords, but I don't really know all the names of them. Dave, Dave, Dave's calling it an A minor seven. Okay, A minor seven. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, Dave, look, Dave would know. Yeah. You listen to that kind of stuff, eh? Uh, well, I went for it's kind of weird because before that it was like Southern rock and roll, man. Almond Brothers, Marshall Tucker, Charlie Daniels, uh, Wet Willie, Grinder Switch. They were they 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 were they never quite made it, but I I saw them live in a you know in a bar and they they came through Merrill and it was really cool. One of the guys in Grinder Switch is guy's name was Twiggy. He played the bass. He's on Almond Brothers at the Fillmore East. He's he was in the uh, road crew for the Almond Brothers mm -hmm. in the heyday of Dwayne, and uh, he was the bass. So I got to talk with him. That was really cool. Cool. Almost so, got him to go outside and uh, you know one of those things, but but he pulled him away from. Me. <laughs> So that brings the bottom of the quote. You mentioned a couple of people. So, like, what are who are your, you know, your your guitar heroes? Or is there any players that you kind of try to emulate? Uh, well, Dwayne and Dicky from the Almond Brothers. I steal a lot of their licks, and uh, or ideas and licks. I don't really play it the way they do. I could never like Daniel Horsley can play that. That that genre of music, perfect. It, it, there's something about it. Uh, Toy Caldwell, Al D. You know, it, it, it it's going to fluctuate. Al D. Miola, uh, George Benson, John McLaughlin. Uh, of course, I love Clapton and Page and all those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a big uh, Led Zeppelin fan, but I like Led Zeppelin. You know, but I like Jimmy Page's. You know, um, like the. the I, it's funny. I always tried to learn the uh, the uh, the solo to Stairway to Heaven, and right. I could never get all the notes. And Craig Reckless just did a note for note thing up. Yeah, with a tab. It's very cool. He says he he faxed it to Page, and Page acknowledged that it was spot on. That's pretty cool. That's but anyway, uh, I, there's just so many guitar players you know that I've listened to, but I guess if you know my my ultimate heroes were like at the Fillmore East, Almond Brothers, Dickie Betts and Dwayne Almond together. They were just, and I'm, I'm leaving, I, you know, I, I like Pat Metheny when he was, he was, he was great. I thought he was a really good blues guitarist was um, the blind guy, uh, Jeff Healy. Jeff Healy. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Well, you, well, you know, he's Canadian. He actually had a bar in downtown Toronto. And, and yeah. He, yeah. And he would, he would, uh, like you know, he had bands in there, whatever. And he, he'd go up and he, he'd play. Like he was, he was the he, the house band for his own part <laughs> when he was in town. I found a uh, a, a video on YouTube. It didn't have vid. It, you couldn't. It, it wasn't. It was, a, it was a YouTube thing, but there was no uh, no no video. It was just a, a Jeff Healy. It was a live thing they did, and I ended up buying the CD. And him and another guy did a version of All Along the Watchtower. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Like, he was, you know, I, I I bought all his albums when, he, you know, I, I thought he, for, I, I got introduced to him in that movie, 
you know, the uh, Roadhouse. Patrick Swayze. Roadhouse, yeah. Roadhouse, yeah. Yeah. And I said, man, that guy's cool. Who is he? And then he, right after, right around then, he came out with what, my, while my guitar gently weeps. Did he he did a cover of that. They played it all over the radio here in Baltimore. So I bought that CD, and then I bought every CD he put out back back in the day. Yeah, well, his whole thing, I mean, the secret to his sound was the fact that the way he played it on his lap with his fingers. Yeah. So, like, his whole technique and the way he would bend and stuff like that was just insane because he'd be doing it like pawing the guitar kind of like this on his lap, right? Yeah. You know? so it, it's it, and it, when you watch him play in the and his fingerings his chord fingerings and this and that like it, it's it's so unorthodox that it gives it a completely different um tonality you know you're not going to figure anything out watching him play oh no, no no because he gets different sound you know i i equate him to uh um Stevie Ray Vaughan, they don't sound anything like each other, but they play so much differently than anybody else. To well, me, nobody played like Stevie Ray Vaughan. What I, know? what I, you know, if you wanted, for me anyway, if you want to draw a comparison between the two, what both of them had in their playing was fire, intensity. You know what I mean? They were very intense players. I, I, I remember, this is a long time ago, when Jeff Healy, and this is, I think it became a big deal. It's probably on YouTube. You can watch it. When Jeff Healy was on Johnny Carson, when Johnny Carson was still on, and he came out and he did a song with his with his band. It was just a three piece band, and he comes out and he's playing and he's sitting in the chair and he's you know, and then the song just starts building up on momentum, and he stands up out of the chair, and he's playing but with the guitar flat against him and like this, you know what I mean? So instead of it being hor you know, like this, it was down like, and he's playing and he's pulling these notes and these crazy ass bends and, and the guitar's just screaming and he's like bouncing around and people like floss their shit. <laughs> I don't know how a guitar would stay in tune the way he plays it. Same with Stevie Ray. I know. And Rick Hefter, yes, I like Warren Haynes a whole lot. He's another one I could mention, but I could, I could mention 30 guitar players and I'm leaving some out. You know, I, I listen to, I, I do not watch TV except for sports. There has so you know there's no sports. I can't even watch golf for God's sakes. And so I'm on YouTube way, way too many hours of the day <laughs> listening to music. You know, when I run out of videos of you guys that are, you know, uh, you know, I'm always checking. I, I weeded out about a hundred uh, people I sub to that have subbed to me. All these people from Korea and you know everywhere they. I don't know what their channels were, but if it wasn't music, yeah, you know, and and it wasn't people that come back and visit, I I, I weeded out a lot. So now I, it's easier for me to follow you guys, you know, when you put up because I can't ring the bell for everybody. I'd have I'd have sixty emails every day in my box, so I can't ring the bell on everybody. But I try to keep up with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those those are the the I call them the be my friend subs, right? Where like <laughs> you comment on your video and it's like. Be my be my friend or follow me or whatever, and their channel's got nothing to do with music. It's like it's I'm glad you brought that up for all you guys in the chat. Listen, if you get this guy and some of these other gaming guys that want to be your friend and all, or they might give you a thumb, you know, some emojis, and you go check their channel out, and it's gamers, just block them because I got one of them, and I couldn't go into my uh, YouTube studio and check comments until I went to the actual video and block the guy really yeah it, it was it, it happened right everybody i think everybody here's probably recently in their last video got some guy that comes in and says be my friend real yeah. reason i've had is it shit i remember uh, logan or something i think it's yeah logan. and if you check his channel i think he's a gamer or he has no content i forget what yeah. I, I you know i didn't he, i didn't have any problems with my channel from him you know i didn't sub him back and i don't know if he subbed me but uh, right after him, I got like three or four more of the, I've been getting lately, I've been getting all these gaming things mm -hmm. and I'm getting a bunch of rap guys. Now the rap guys, I'll, uh, I'll sub back to them because they're, you know, they just, they, they say they like what I'm playing. They'll never come back and watch another video probably. Yeah. But, uh, and after a month or so, if, if, if I get no participation from them back on my channel, I just unsub. 
Yeah, Janice is saying that he's a bot. Oh, okay. Thanks, Janice. But I, I blocked it out. You know, any any of these gamer, you know, I, I tell people, you know, uh, some people I say, look, if I'm I'm only into music. I'm not into cooking. I'm not into makeup. Yeah. Uh, not into how to increase my sub amounts. I'm not into politics and religion on YouTube. You know that. You know those things. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I, I try to keep everything that I do, guitar folks, folks, it's either guitar chat or playing or talking about it or something. It, it, there's always a, a, a link back to, uh, back to playing or music in general. So, Dave's into cook. Who's, who is, here's a new one named Fesler61. Dave's into cooking with makeup. He's got to be Dave. <laughs> Hey, Fesler 61. Um. <laughs> nice. I like that. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, the picture of a banana. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. I've the seen banana. that. Yeah. I blocked him. I blocked him. I know more of him. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, yeah. You- yeah. Janice Logan. Yeah. There's a guy, Logan. He's he's popped in and two or three of my comments and it's like be my friend or something along those lines and it's like yeah it's all right <laughs> so uh randy crooks has got a good question he goes don who is your go-to band oh, Christ. well let's see right now you know i'll tell you what right now this is this is a here, here i'll give you a left turn right now when i really want to listen to something i'm big time red hot chili peppers i love those guys really I, they, let me tell you something. There, there's no other band that sounds remotely like them. And they uh, sound, they don't sound like any other band. I'll give you that. Yeah. You know, I love the song Californication, um, Under the Bridge. I'm a little sick of Under the Bridge because they play it on the radio all the time. Yeah. But uh, they got a lot of good songs. They're good. And that, and they, they do that one song. I don't know what the name of it is, but the words that they keep saying, give it away, give it away, give it away now. That was a big, uh, big so, term in, in the car business when you sold a car and you didn't hold any profit. You know, <laughs> you know, when you sell cars, the whole idea is to sell the car at or over the sticker price or give you a lot less than what your trade's actually worth. Right. To increase the gross profit because the salesman gets paid on the gross profit of the deal or the net profit, the net profit of the deal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, certain places you worked at the way the play, pay, pay plan worked, and the way they'd advertise, sometimes they didn't give you a chance to uh, hold any profit. So you said, the heck with it. I'll just give it away. Give it away now. Give it away. Give it away now. You know, it's always like, but Red Hot Chili Peppers right now, that's, but I'll listen to Almond Brothers. I'll listen to jazz. I like a lot of jazz, not real heavy jazz. I love blues. You know, Albert King's probably my favorite blues guy. Oh, really? Yeah. My favorite blues song is um, two of them by Albert King. First one's called Cockroach, which most of you have. It. It's a great song. It's about him sleeping out on the porch, and there's a big old cockroach looking up at me. That's a great song, Cockroach. But his, the best song is uh, Breaking Up Somebody's Home. And uh, the sometimes popular and sometimes hated Joe Bonamassa does a great version of that. And so does Warren Haynes, by the way. Breaking Up Somebody's Home. A lot of guys have been, do- a lot of the modern blues guys have been doing that. Uh, Albert King song. Have you ever uh, have you ever seen Bonamassa live? No, not live. But I've, I've watched the videos of him. He's good. I've, you know, I've been watching videos of him since he was a little kid. You know, I've watched people. And uh, you know, when I got into this YouTube thing, we I've talked about this. I think in the live wires. You know, Scott Grove is the it, it, probably Phil McKnight and Scott Grove at about the same time. Right. And I'm sure. But, yeah, Scott Grove was the first one, though. And, I, you know, he got a lot of hate, and I understood why he got hate. He was a little, you know, eccentric and mean and stupid and very stubborn. And, you know, it's a fingerboard, not a fretboard. The, but, uh, oh, Christ, I forgot how I got into it. I lost Scott, my train of thought. Huh? Saying Scott Grove, how he got a lot of heat. Yeah, but I got it. I don't even know how I got into this. That happens when you, you know, I, I participated very heavily in the 70s and 80s lifestyle. Uh, you were talking about when you first got into YouTube, it was Scott Grove and Phil McKnight. 
Yeah, but I forget what got me into that. <laughs> it happens, folks. You know, right. don't get old, man. I'll be 63 in August. <laughs> so we're we're over the hour. And I'm not, I'm drinking iced tea. I'm drinking iced tea. So we're over the hour. So um are you okay, Don, to go a little bit longer? Because we still got, I got nothing to do. 42 I people. Do. So let me just take this opportunity. Now, we're not going to end the show, but I just I got to take this opportunity. I want to thank everybody who has tuned in and, and watching right now. Thank you all so much. And, um, folks, uh, if you want to help support the Guitar Hack channel, below in the links, I have uh, links to Guitar Hack merch. I've got T-shirts like Don is wearing and other folks, other, other styles as well. There's mugs there. There's hoodies there, all that kind of good stuff. That would all help. Uh, there's also a PayPal down there, which would help as well. And if you don't follow me on my Instagram and my Facebook, I have links to both of those uh, below as well. So any of those things will be much appreciated. Uh, thanks very much. All right. Back to hey, you. I don't know if we said hi to Doc or the Dog Pub, but hey, Doc, how you doing? Hey, uh, Doc, I got the book today. That's a big book. He he's got a store to tell me, and I got to read this Rolling Stone. Um, oh, you book. talking about paperback book? It ain't a paper book. This is a hard copy. I don't have it. I'm not going to go get it. It's 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 like it's a hardback book. It's about that high, and right. it's very thick. So I guess it's got a lot of pictures in it. But uh, holy moly, I thought I was getting a little paperback. It's a used book. You know, I got it from the used book club or whatever one of those sites. Right. And uh, I came, yeah, it took, it took a, that took a week and a half, but so I got a doc, I'll read that uh, chapter and I'll get back to you on email. He's going to tell me a good story. So great Fanzini is saying 63. He's a kid. <laughs> well, Fanzini, okay. A kid. You got me maybe Vanzini, but not by much. I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. So, folks, any questions for Don or myself? Throw them in. It's uh, nine fourteen. We'll go here. We'll finish. We'll finish around nine thirty, I think. And uh, just fire them. The IRS doesn't deserve to live. Okay. I don't know where that's coming from, Quentin. Are they? Are they after you? Are they calling you? <laughs> Anyways. Hey, Bruce, I, I don't know that. I probably know the song, but I don't know all the names of the rot, Red Hot Chili Pepper. I just like their music. You know, I, I'll go from one video to the next. I, you know, they're a really good live band, I thought, you know. Yeah, like I would never have pictured you as a Red Hot Chili Pepper guy. They've got, you know, their stuff's melodic, but it's 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 on a different, I don't know, it's different about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a little yeah. weird, but it's still a lot. I, I, I'm all about melodic stuff. Yeah, it grew a few, a few exceptions. Yeah, well, it, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of groove to it, right? Like it, the, I mean, a bass player, Flea, and a drummer, like it's they they lay it down. Uh, Randy Crooks is saying, "Hey, hack, watching your show prevents me from practicing." <laughs> do what I do, man. When I'm watching these shows, I usually have a guitar in my lap, and I'm just many times done that. Done that. Doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So what name in here I saw didn't recognize. Where's that? Yeah. Uh, oh, I recognize, but I haven't seen him. HK. I haven't seen that uh, name for a while, but I recognize HK. Oh yeah, HK. HK is in the yeah. UK. Yeah. 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 What's up, Doc? Okay. So uh, what's uh, what what's coming up next for you, Don? I, I with the YouTube and the channel or. Well. Here's why my hope is to get, you know, I want to sound, I want my videos to sound like, uh, you know, the sound that six string Brian gets that EJ gets that, uh, uh, Jason Wade when, you know, I wish Jason would do more videos cause he's a great guitar player. I don't know if he's still here or not, but he was here earlier. I, I want that good sound. You know, I, I'll never achieve quite the, the, the sound that like Steve from Boston gets, but that I love that. You know, although he wears it out, but I love, you know, that is a, that is a severely delayed overdriven sound that he gets, mm -hmm. but the way it's, it's done. So I want to get, a, get it working where I have to spend a half an hour to, to mix my videos where now I just, it takes me 10 minutes to put a video up because right. 
every, the camera, it's, it's a movie file, you know? So I want to get the doll thing down. I've got these lights and now hopefully my, uh, I want, you know, I want everybody to see how pretty that Les Paul is that, uh, blueberry burst. Yeah. And the lighting is terrible in my room up there. And plus I have, uh, you know, wood, some kind of wood panel, you know, thick wood paneling, a dark wood in there. So it's, you know, dark walls. So hopefully these lights and they're adjust. What's really cool about these lights is you can adjust the intensity of them. Mm -hmm. So I'll play around. And, uh, you know, one day I might delve into doing the uh, streams, but you know, I'll wait until everybody stops doing them so much. And then maybe I'll jump in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to find an opening. Exactly. And, and I'll tell you what, I don't know if I'm going to go to OBS is to me like a, a nightmare. Oh. You get all these little, all these little tunnels, I call them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mitch, Mitch almost, Mitch had, was walking me through it. And then I don't know what happened, but you know. For a solo show, that's what I use. And if you want good sound, you got to use OBS. And I want, I want my videos to have, you know, cause all my old videos are just the, uh, I don't have it. I thought, yeah. Do I have it? This little, uh, zoom, zoom, uh, you with with uh condense here here it is look i'll show you until i got the q8 like probably 70 percent of my videos on my channel were done with this little thing and this mm. condenser mic up here right okay so now i have this thing the q8 which has these which sound good some of my videos were done with them however now i can go direct out of my mixer into here Right. XLRs. Yeah. And hook this up to my computer. It's a movie file. It's, you know, it takes well, it, 10 minutes to, to take it from here into my computer and put it on YouTube. We talked about the sound yesterday and I was saying to you, like, if you can, if you could do a mix of like the, the track you're playing with and your guitar and kind of mix them, in using some kind of recording software. Like I, I use the absolute, you know, cheapest, dumbest recording software. It's called Audacity. Yeah. And I, I, use, gotta, I meant, to, I wrote that down. I got to explore. Yeah. So, you know, I, and I like, I mean, I'm not technical, whatever, I'll, but I'll import the record, like the recording and then I'll record into it. And then I set levels and I do a mix and it just, what's nice about it is it doesn't sound like you're playing. Oh, um, you know, with something in the background, it sounds like you're part of the recording, yeah. you, know what I mean? you know, and you get a nice blend, right? So that, that's, that's what I use for my backing track for, for the longest time. I've been, well, not the long, maybe the last few months I've been using that. So hey, let me ask you a question. If I do go the amp route instead, mm -hmm. you know, so I have the helix going into it. Am I going to have to mic the amp if I get a combo, or am I going to have an out from the amp? It depends on the amp. It depends on the amp. So some some amps will have um, like a line out, right, where you can you can use like a quarter inch cable and run that right into a mixer, right? Okay. Some amps will have that, like my Marshall DSL forty does, or you my. Um, but that's with a quarter inch. If you do that, does that cut off the speaker of the amp, or is the amp still gonna? Uh, it depends. So that's what I'm a little confused at. Like, if I do that, the out from the uh, the the amp, and use that while I'm playing, you can still. I'm, hear gonna, I'm gonna hear it through the speaker. It's gonna be different than what comes through the cable into the the doll oh. or the mixer, right? The Marshall, okay. Um, when I use, use that line out, I'm still hearing the amp, right? I'm still hearing it, but the Hughes and Kettner's, you can set it up to, to basically kill the speaker and just use, just come out of the amp and directly into your mixer. And then you would have to have monitors if you wanted to hear yourself. So depending on what amp you get, it'll give you different, different options and what you can do with that. Hmm. Well, that's that's going to be something next fall or winter that I'll look at. right now. The, the setup I have works fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the more the bigger thing for you at this point would probably be to get, like I was saying, 
find some recording software that you can import your playing and import the track and then mix it. And I think yeah, I think you'd 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 like the sound a lot more. Hey Pooh Ninja's that in the house. Hey Pooh. Hey Pooh, how are you, man? There's another guy that should do more videos playing because he's good. Uh, that yeah. one that I uh, the acoustic thing that he did. That was I, great. That was great. I that, was, that I put that into my trio as it looped what he had played. That was great to jam to. I, uh, I, I yeah I said well I told him earlier today in the place that we don't speak of that uh, <laughs> he should put out some playing videos. So um, yeah. I love those videos, but they're short, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, today was a long one, or the one last one he put out was yeah, a long I one. I think it was yesterday. It was like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. What's going on here? I know what's going on. Uh, HK is saying, is there an app called A Minor? I don't know. I don't think there is. Not that I'm aware. buying it if there is. I'll buy it. God damn it. Oh, Squire Telecaster. There's a new name in the channel. There's a new name. Hey, Squire. I, can, I sound terrible, but I can adjust my tone by being aware of my technique there you go all right cool welcome to the channel all right so if, if there are no further questions and russ markhart earlier was telling me he was smoking a cigar he's enjoying a la polina el ano 1896 out on the deck that sounds awesome just by reading that comment i want to go have a cigar outside there you go and oh, hey, Doc, yeah, I'll, I'll be emailing you here. If not, you know, probably tomorrow sometime. I'm a fast reader. How easily I am influenced. All right. Okay. And what I use with the Helix. Yes, Don. Oh, okay. Does the A minor come in a half step down model? <laughs> Say that again. They're just, they're, they're joking. They're teasing around. me about my A minor. A minor, yeah. Okay. So they're, they're all going on about that. They're all going on about that. I'm a, I, I need to go into rehab for A minor. I'm a dead addict. <laughs> yeah, really. really. Uh, uh, nicotine. And don't forget to get your uh, Guitar Hack merchandise. I've got. Yes. I should only have two of them, but I got. I should only have three of them, but I got. One time I was a little too much Jameson and I ordered two instead of one. So. I got three. I should only have two of the old ones and one of the new ones, but I got three of the old ones. But at least they're different colors. So. Yeah, yeah, and I got to. I got to think. Nice, oh, man. This is large. I've washed this thing several times. It hadn't shrunk a bit. Yeah, it's super comfortable too. I got to thank Don too. Don has been one of the biggest supporters of my channel. He's been. He shows up on all the chats, and he's just and he's a great member of the community. So that's why I wanted to have Don on because he just. One of the good ones out there. So really appreciate Don. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries, man. No worries. And thanks for all you guys for showing up, man. That's cool. Yeah, much appreciated. Much appreciated. All right. So, any uh, any last things you wanted to mention, Don, before we wrap this up? Yeah, just you know, if you want to, if you want to hear some more A minor, I got one coming up in the next day or two, probably tomorrow. <laughs> There's more A minor coming. A minor. Loan me a dime, blues. You know, it's a good tune. You should listen to it. Boss Gags, Loan Me a Dime. It's been covered by a lot of people too, but uh, it, the yeah. best version is, is Boss Gags. The studio version, because Dwayne, yeah, Dwayne plays on that. Yeah, he plays slide, Dave was saying earlier. Yeah. All right, guys. So, Don, hang on for a minute. So, thanks everybody for checking out the show. Much appreciated. Uh, I got a video going up tomorrow. Uh, another Floyd thing. So, check that out. Uh, also, um, somebody was saying earlier on the live wires, my riff of the week, I'm going to start putting those out as standalone videos. I put the first one out today. It's the one that I did the last show for those about to rock. So if you want to check those riffs of the week, they're on my channel now and I'll start putting them in week to week. So, uh, it's for you guys. So at this point, have a great, uh, great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. Uh, we will see you all on the live wire show. Check that. Check it out. We got a really good show coming up. Uh, it's it's developing into a really cool show. Monday at nine o'clock on the Live Wires channel. So check that out. And uh, I'll be back doing the Hack Show one week from today, eight o'clock. All right, folks. Have a great rest of your day, and have a great week weekend. Good night, guys. Thanks again for hanging with us.
All right. Cheers, everybody.